Hi, my name is Bensi Kahana. Welcome to today's history class. Our theme for today is the scramble for and partition of Africa. And our topic is the Berlin Conference and the partition of Africa. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify the background leading to the Berlin Conference of 1884. Examine the features and nature of the partition and recognize the impact of the Berlin Conference. In the history of Africa, Africa experienced a series of struggle before she was able to gain independence or her freedom. Before she gained independence, Africa served as a playing ground and a battlefield for many European nations who discovered the human and natural resources that were prevalent in Africa. The discovery of these resources in Africa led to the scramble and partitioning of Africa. Now, in order to prevent European nations from having conflict among themselves, Africa had to be free for all European nations to trade in. The formalization for the scramble of Africa and her resources was reached and agreed upon during the Berlin Conference, which took place on the 15th of November, 1884, and lasted to the 26th of February, 1885. This conference was organized by Germany's first vice chancellor named Otto von Bismarck. Now, let's proceed as we look at the factors that led to the Berlin Conference. One of the major factors that led to the Berlin Conference of 1884 to 1885 was the Industrial Revolution. The Industrial Revolution refers to the rapid change from handmade production to machine-based production. In Europe, in the 18th century, nations like Great Britain, France, Germany, Portugal, Spain and the likes experienced a rise in industries and they needed natural resources for their growing industries. It is important for us to note that the Industrial Revolution started in Great Britain in the year 1760 before it spread to other parts of Europe and the United States of America. Now, during the Industrial Revolution, European nations needed raw materials for their growing industries. They needed raw materials such as gold, copper, cocoa, and the likes. And Africa had these resources in abundance. Africa also had the manpower needed for these growing industries. It is important for us to know that in the early 19th century, before the Berlin Conference, European nations only established trade posts at the coast. They never really interacted or had things to do with African nations. However, this was going to change as European nations started competing amongst themselves in order to acquire resources from Africa. Going on, another factor responsible for the Berlin Conference was the scramble for Africa. The scramble for Africa refers to the struggle among European nations to gain political domination over African territories. As we can see from our image, these European nations wanted a piece of Africa for themselves. Now, the European nations discovered that for them to have uninterrupted access to these raw materials, they needed to gain political control or domination over these African countries. They also discovered that it will help them maintain their economic sphere of influence and trade monopoly. You will agree with me that when two or more persons are interested in a particular thing, conflict is bound to set in, right? Well, this was the case in Africa among the European nations. Various European nations had interest in the same areas at the same time. For instance, Britain and France had interest in West Africa. Now, Britain and Portugal also had interest in Egypt, while Belgium and France also had interest in Central Africa, particularly the Congo. Furthermore, in the year 1876, King Leopold II of Belgium called for a meeting for all those countries interested in Africa. This meeting brought about the formation of the International Africa Association and King Leopold II was made the president of this association. 
The main aim of this association was to abolish slave trade in parts of Africa where it still existed and to also bring about civilization to Africa. But King Leopold II had ulterior motives. He was also interested in acquiring territories for his home country. And so he sent a representative named Henry Morton Stanley to go into the Congo from the west through the mouth of the river. France soon discovered King Leopold's ulterior motive, and so they sent a representative named Pierre de Braza to go lay claims to the Congo. This led to intense competition between European nations such as Belgium, France, Portugal, and the likes. By 1884, the acquisition of Congo became very intense among the European nations as Congo was seen as an area that was rich in raw materials and it was also seen as a commercial waterway across Africa. In order to prevent conflict or rivalry between these European nations, the first vice chancellor of Germany, Otto von Bismarck, had to call for the Berlin Conference. The Berlin Conference was the gathering of 13 European nations which include Austria-Hungary, Britain, Denmark, France, Germany, Portugal, Spain, and others, and also the United States of America. Now, during this conference, no African leader was invited. During this conference, the operations in Africa was discussed and it was agreed upon that there will be no conflict among these European nations, but rather they would all exist peacefully. All the agreements reached during the Berlin Conference were passed on as the Berlin Act of 1885. The Berlin Conference brought about peaceful operations among European nations in Africa. At the Berlin Conference, the modes of acquiring territories was discussed. One of the methods that was agreed upon during this conference was effective occupation. Effective occupation meant that European nations would have to establish a government in African territories and also maintain order in such territories. They were also asked to enter into treaties with African leaders. Now remember, I told you at the beginning that initially, European nations only established trade posts at the coast, but this changed by reason of the Berlin Conference. The division of Africa into parts was known as the Partition of Africa. African territories and her resources were divided among European nations and the United States of America. Some of the features of the Partition of Africa include establishment of boundary lines, division of indigenous communities, introduction of trade and religion, and the formalization of colonialism. Now, let's look at these features one after the other. During the conference, it was agreed amongst the 13 European nations and the United States of America that for them to exist peacefully, they would have to establish boundary lines amongst themselves. These boundary lines will help them know the extent of a particular nation's territory so as not to infringe on each other's territories. Another feature of the Berlin Conference was the division of indigenous communities. In order to avoid conflicts and for easy control, African territories were divided into ethnic groups and tribes. Another feature of the Berlin Conference was the introduction of trade and religion. By reason of the Berlin Conference, foreign religion such as Christianity was introduced into different parts of Africa. The Berlin Conference also opened up Africa for trade. And the last feature for this class is the formalization of colonialism. We can define colonialism as the partial or full occupation and economic exploitation of one country by another. I'd like you to know that the Berlin Conference did not initiate the colonial process of Africa. As we can see in the case of Algeria and Egypt, they were already colonized before the Berlin Conference. However, the Berlin Conference formalized the scramble for Africa. Now, 
let's go ahead to look at the impact of the Berlin Conference on Africa. Remember, I said in this class that all the agreements reached during the Berlin Conference were passed as the Berlin Act of 1885. Now, some of the impact of the Berlin Conference include free navigation and trade, peaceful resolutions of territorial disputes, creation of colonial empires, and the abolishment of slave trade. Now, let's look at these impacts one after the other, starting with free navigation and trade. During the Berlin Conference, it was agreed that the rivers Niger and Congo be free for navigation and trade to all European nations. This meant that no European nation could lay claim to these rivers, but rather everyone was allowed to make use of them. Another impact of the Berlin Conference was the peaceful resolution of territorial disputes. During the Berlin Conference, European nations and the United States of America were dissuaded from entering into treaties with African leaders against other European powers. It was agreed that every territorial dispute among these nations should be discussed peacefully without resorting to violence. Another impact of the Berlin Conference was the creation of colonial empires. The Berlin Conference led to the creation of colonies in all parts of Africa, and this was achieved through the method of effective occupation. A colony is said to be a territory that is under the political control of a sovereign state. And for this class, the last impact of the Berlin Conference was the abolition of slave trade in all parts of Africa. The slave trade, which was the transportation of humans from one point to another, was put to an end by reason of the Berlin Conference. During the conference, it was agreed that slave trade in Africa should be put to an end. However, it still continued in some parts of Africa. This brings us to the end of today's lesson. But before we go, let's take a quick summary on all we've learned so far. First, we learned that the Berlin Conference of 1884 to 1885 came as a result of the Industrial Revolution and the scramble for Africa. Secondly, the conference was organized in Berlin by the first Chancellor of Germany, Otto von Bismarck. We also looked at some of the features of the Berlin Conference of 1884 to 1885, and they include the establishment of boundary lines, division of indigenous communities, and introduction of trade and religion. Lastly, we looked at some of the impacts of the Berlin Conference, and they include free navigation and trade, peaceful resolutions of territorial disputes, creation of colonial empires, and the abolishment of slave trade. Now, before we go, let's take a few questions to test our knowledge on all we've learned so far. Question 1. Which of the following is an impact of the Berlin Conference? Option A. Exportation of slaves from Africa to Europe. Option B, equality between Europeans and Africans. Option C, peaceful resolutions of territorial disputes. Or option D, restricted navigation on the coasts of Africa. The correct answer is option C, peaceful resolutions of territorial disputes. Question two. One of the features of the Berlin Conference was to Option A. Allow Belgium to be in charge of the partition of Africa. Option B. Create boundary lines in areas of European interests. Option C. Destroy Africa and make her inhabitants suffer. Or Option D. Seek for ways that the slave trade could flourish. The correct answer is option B. One of the features of the Berlin Conference 
was to create boundary lines in areas of European interests. I hope you learned something new from today's lesson about the Berlin Conference and the Partition of Africa. Till we meet again next time, it's bye-bye!